Hello, my name is Tridar. Welcome to part two of the Roman Watchtower tutorial. Let's pick up right where we left off. So last time we stopped midway up the tower because I thought this would be a good place to stop if you only wanted to construct the lower octagonal section of the tower. Uh, but now we will be, of course, adding on the, the much larger and more ornate and very superfluous top of the rest of the tower. <coughs> so. Uh, the first thing we need to do is lay down the foundation for that on this level, which I don't think I covered. Uh, so I covered the crenellations around the wall here previously. I like so. And the next level is just going to be uh, this, this here. So if we start over here, right there, we have the ladders that are coming up from the lower levels. And around this, we want to put down a bit of diorite and uh, cobblestone. We're also starting some new ladders right here to take us up to the next level. We're going to have, of course, four of those. Just like so. I want to make sure I trace around all of the edges here so you can see it in more high relief that there. And uh, this here is the foundation pattern that you need to build out of the diorite and cobblestone. It's all cobble except for four blocks of diorite. Of course, just uh, rotate that 90 degrees, build it again, and then four times in total till you have this pattern here. And uh, that's going to be the foundation. For the next layer, you can see it, it all fits within the crenellations and uh, Outside the wall here, not the wall, the, the floor. Right there. For the next level up, what we want to do is put some stone brick stairs here. A bit more diorite, of course, extending this ladder straight up. We're going to be doing that for a little while. Just plain cobblestone on the interior with a ladder here. On the exterior, though, we do have some stone bricks. And some stone brick stairs here. And I think I might have missed this here. This, uh, these two blocks, I broke the ladder. Uh, these two blocks here and over here, I think should probably be stone bricks. That might be a small detail that I missed. Because it's kind of hidden back here. And for everything else, just go ahead and extend it up on the interior. Uh, you don't have to replicate the stone brick banding here if you don't want to on the interior. I, gen I generally left that out on this tutorial. Um, but if you want to go the extra mile, you can for that. Uh, next level up here, block of diorite, right there, because we're going to be building some col column uh, shafts. If you want to, you can extend these up for a total of six blocks of diorite here. Every place you see one of these, uh, one of these blocks of diorite is going to be a column shaft. Or if it's attached to the wall, it'll be a, a, a plaster, like so. And we've got a, an air gap here for that block. Like that. And behind it, everything else is just cobblestone building off the foundation going straight up. All right, next level here, of course, extending up our diorite. And now we're banding back to stone bricks here on the exterior, still going straight up with just plain cobblestone on the interior. Next level up, same deal. Diorite and cobblestone. Uh, on the interior here though, I think, uh, I think we do have uh, these st uh, stone brick stairs here. On all four of the doors in here. Uh, because those are, of course, corbels to support our floor. Let's look at the exterior first. So here, of course, we've been extending this diorite right up, and we want to close this off with a lentil, some cobblestone, and another lentil on the interior. Just like so on the exterior, we're banding with the stone bricks again. Like that there, and you already know the pattern of this floor. It's exactly the same design we built several times previously. We just have the ladders extending over here on four of the sides, of course, 
to provide uh, access to the next levels. And uh, speaking of the next level, uh, it's an easy level. You're just extending up your diorite columns and putting cobblestone behind that everywhere, except, of course, for the interior here. And of course, we're building another guardrail and extending our ladders up again. And over the doorways, we want to have some upside down snow brick stairs here for a small decorative lintel. All right, next phase up, we want to put a, a little decorative triangular pediment over that, just like so, with a couple of stone brick stabs, um, slabs, not stabs, <laughs> um, and diorite behind that. Of course, extending our diorite up, they should have reached uh, the full six blocks tall. And stone bricks on the exterior and just plain cobblestone on the interior. And of course, keep extending your ladder up. All right, same deal on the interior for the next phase, except you can see we're now on top of these columns. We are putting, of course, our Corinthian capitals, just like we did all the way back down here. For the doorway, with these columns here and those capitals, we're going to be doing that again for all of these columns up here, just like so. Every place that you can put one. Uh, for these uh, two at the front, you can do all four. For the attached pilasters to the wall, you can only put two. So yeah, go around and do that for all of your columns. And then do it again, but uh, with stone bricks. Just like so, of course. The upside down stairs representing our acanthus leaves for our Corinthian capitals. Stone bricks behind that and cobble behind that. And of course, you can see we have some more corbels. Just like so. Which, of course, means we have another floor slash ceiling that you want to install. Same design as all the previous ones. Uh, out front here, though, we want to put some blocks of tuff. Just like so here. And I didn't, I didn't bother to decorate it back here, but if you have some extra tuff, you can, you can put it back in there. Uh, but otherwise, we want to follow the same pattern because we're adding now, of course, the entablature to um, our columns and everything. And there may be a few extra extra blocks of tuff back here. That's not necessary. If it's not visible, you don't need to have it be tough. It can be just cobblestone, or you can leave it hollow. Uh, but yeah, you just want to follow this little pattern here. And then do it again. But this time, of course, it is outlined with diorite. And you should have that pattern there to stack it directly on top of the tuff. And, of course, close off under here, which is some plain cobblestone. And uh, same deal for the interior. You, you know what's going on in there by now. Just keep extending that upwards, adding the floor and everything, like so. Uh, on the exterior here, though, we now want to add the cornice to our entablature with the upside-down stone brick stairs here with the slab extending off on the corners for the, uh, for the raking cornice section, just like so. And we want to wrap these all the way around, just like that, till we get over here, where, of course, you just want to do the, the same thing on all four sides. Uh, over here, for our decorative pediment, just like we did way, way back down here, for this, all of that, we're going to be building that again, but four times up here. Uh, one, of course, each facing the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, like so. Just the same as you did before, and behind that, of course, we have uh, a small line of roof tiles, uh, represented by, of course, the red nether brick and the deep slate tiles. Uh, we want to extend that up again here to finish the, the pediment and close off the tympanum and everything. Of course, the, the, the recessed section here where the torch is, that's the, called the tympanum. And behind that, we want to just let, uh, layer in some full blocks of uh, cobble and, of course, some half slabs like you see done here. And I'll just, I'll just trace out the where the full blocks are, like so. 
uh, because we are in this section here transitioning from the hexagonal, not, not hexagonal, octagonal phase of the build to a circular phase because that's generally how the, the ancient Romans would do these types of towers, especially in the lighthouses. It would start with a square base and then it would uh, turn into octagons and then at the top it would turn into one moment it would turn into a circle just like so of course the, that pattern most notably can be seen in the great lighthouse of Alexandria although a Greek monument the, the Romans did of course adopt the pattern and continue using the style uh, over here a uh, bit of diorite at the top for some uh, uh, decorative finials. And behind that, wherever I put the red over here, just stack up uh, stone bricks, cobblestone behind that, and of course another floor. Next level up, a bit more diorite here. You can go ahead and close that off with uh, one final block there. And just a, a big ring of cobblestone behind that. Next level up. A ring of uh, cobblestone and stone bricks for the exterior, and then we're now we're now beyond this here, so all that down there is finished. And uh, a ring of cobblestone again, and now a ring of diorite. But uh, now we want to put upside down stone brick stairs in these patterns here because what we are doing, as you might remember from the first part, is is that we are adding some decorative crenellations. I say decorative because they're so far off the ground, there's not really much defensive use. It's just a, a motif we are using to tie all of the building together. Just like so. Of course, on the interior here, you can see we have another level of corbels. So you know what, you know what that means? Another floor. Like so. And for this one on the exterior here, um, Put uh, stone bricks on top of all the upside down stone brick stairs and extend the diorite right up for one block. The next level here, we're following the same pattern for all the previous crenellations that we did way back down there. We want to put diorite right on top of the stone bricks and behind those we then want to put cobblestone. Like so. And then I believe we are done building floors, actually. Uh, because you just want to sheath the entire thing over with cobblestone at this point every place that the ladders aren't coming through. Of course, we want to leave the central section for the beacon beam. All right, over here at next phase, we are beginning. We're going to lay out the foundation for what is going to be the circular portion of our uh, uh, tholos that we're going to have on top of here. Of course, uh, the, the more astute Observers may recognize that all of this uh, this portion is essentially the Roman Oracle building, but uh, repurposed as a decorative feature for our Roman Watchtower. Uh, so we want to lay down some column bases with uh, crosses of tough, like you replace the block, like you see done here. Uh, Twelve of these in total. Course, just arrange them right here. This uh, this uh, uh, ladder way will cite the first one for you, and then just place the other ones here. They should all fall on the center lines, right there. And behind that, of course, we want to lay out some stone bricks and diorite right back here for the interior walls. And of course, since we're high up in the tower, we want to make our walls much thinner to reduce the load of the structure, uh, the rest of the building and everything. Uh, of course, uh, on all the diorite for all the crenellations that we built, go around and place cobblestone slabs on top of those, and that will finish that. All right, next phase, we want to put on top of the tough stone brick stairs facing in to each other. And on top of that, if you want to, you can go ahead and extend up four, one, two, three, four, five, six blocks of diorite on top of all of those. Uh, because, of course, that's going to be our columns that we built, just like we built these columns down there and, and those all the way back down there. We're going to be doing those again for one final set back up here. 
Just like so. And extend, of course, all the into interior walls up. Like that there. All right, next phase. Uh, I've already told you about the columns, so I'll focus on the interior here. Very simple. Extend, extend everything up with diorite and cobblestone. Like you see done here. I do it again with stone bricks, but put lentils over the doorways to finish those off. Extend it up again with cobblestone and put upside down stone brick stairs to finish those off there for a little decoration over the doorway. Next phase, really easy. Stone bricks uh, there and cobblestone here. Stone bricks again. Cobblestone again. Uh, start building your Corinthian uh, capitals. Just like so. Of course, behind that, we just want another ring of stone bricks. Like that there. And another ring of cobblestone here. And uh, now that we are finishing off our entablature at the top, I'm realizing that I made a small mistake. This shouldn't be cobblestone here on this exterior ring. This should be tough. Uh, I, I missed that when I was doing when I was doing this. My apologies on that. Uh, but uh, it's it's not that many blocks of tough. And now that I'm telling you, you should be able to fix it because we want to have. Um, uh, in general, I've converted over to using uh, tough for my entablature designs. You know, li like you see here, because it's a nice it's a nice high contrast block to the cobble. And it makes it stand out a bit more. But uh, yeah, every place you see this cobble here beneath the red wool, make that a uh, block of tough. And on top of the blocks of tough, uh, put a, a big white ring of diorite, like you see done here. Uh, I'm not sure why there are blocks missing here. That's another problem up here. With this, I didn't catch. And these these stone bricks, these these should just be cobblestone. Just behind the stone bricks, roof everything off with a sheet of cobblestone, but leave the interior um, of the cylinder in here free. All right, uh, next level up, we have a ring of tough, which probably shouldn't be there. Now that I'm looking at it, that's where the ring of tough went. Thought I wouldn't have made that mistake. Hmm. Well, we can have a second ring of tough, I think. Uh, but if you want to, you can follow this design here with the cobblestone, the diorite, and the tough. Uh, perhaps a double ring of tough would look nice up here as well. If you want to go ahead and do that, I think I would probably uh, probably fix that if I had if I had noticed it before it was published, uh, but uh, uh, roof the entire thing off with, of course, a ring of tough. Behind that, this doesn't have to be tough. It can be just be cobble. And, of course, leave the cobblestone uh, cylinder in there intact. Same deal for the next phase. Just sheath the entire thing over with cobble. Of course, we want to add our cornice of upside-down stone brick stairs. Just wrap them around, like you see done here, just around the, the tough that you built on the last phase. All right, for the next one, we're now building uh, the dome on top of our tower, very high off the ground now. Don't fall, definitely be fatal. Um, so on top of the upside down stone brick stairs, go around and place uh, cobblestone slabs, except in these places here, we want to place diorite because we're gonna be building uh, some another set of these little decorative uh, finials, which we're gonna be building like that here if you want to go ahead and uh, do those. And behind that, of course, we just want to have cobblestone right there. And then uh, cobblestone filling, but on the exterior, we want to have some uh, roof tiles again with the red nether brick and the deep slate tiles arranged like so around there. Next level up, finish off these little decorative uh, diorite finials. And put in the cobblestone and deep slate tiles like you see done here. All right, next level up. 
uh, we just want to have a hint of ribbing for our small little dome so we have these extra bits of cobble uh, but otherwise place the uh, roof tile blocks like you see done here it's not a very big dome so I don't think you'll have any trouble with that next phase more roof tiles just like so and we want to begin uh, closing off this interior here so just put a ring of cobblestone right there and of course on the next phase put another ring right there for that and more roof tiles and just fill in all the exterior I mean all the interior void space with cobblestone or you can leave that hollow if you want to it's not very much cobblestone all right next block level here another slice pretty easy we're getting to the top now we want to close everything off up here with uh, this one little decoration of die right here at the top right there to I'm trapped yeah, let's go out the door uh, to finish that off and I got turned around we need to go this way all right last little set of roof tiles up here according to that pattern there and then I think we are now just putting on a cobblestone full blocks and a couple of half slabs right here of course leaving the hole for our beacon beam just a big five by five square of cobble and then on top of that we want to have this little direct uh, and cobble pattern here at the top with perhaps some torches here and there to light up your build and it'll be in survival you're going to need more torches than I've listed though uh, do that again for another slice here for a third slice but a little bit of tough behind it here again uh, cobblestone and diorite just like so uh, now for the pinnacle we have cobblestone and upside down stone brick stairs and then only uh, right side up stone brick stairs and a bit of cobble not cobble stone bricks we're done with the cobble uh, and now we want to have this little cross of diorite with of course the hole in the middle for our beacon beam and you want to extend that up for uh, however many blocks just just uh, fly a little and cut to the chase on that it's just going straight up you want to extend that up for a total of one two three four five six blocks just like so here and then whoops and then on top of that you want to have some stone brick stairs like that there and then stone brick stairs again but upside down and then stone brick stairs one last time but of course right side up and that will finish off your beacon beam which goes all the way all the way back down to where we started whereupon your uh, deluxe model of Roman watchtower will be complete so I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial for the Roman watchtower remember the entire world here is of course available in the video description for both Java and bedrock versions and I hope that you will be able to use this to keep your world safe from all sorts of invaders and everything so I want to thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time